As far as the phones went, there were no huge upside surprises, but Tim Cook had already said previously that they're going to be able to sell every iPhone that they can make. They're especially constrained in the iPhone 7 Plus, which is the larger phone. It's the one with dual cameras. That's their new innovation. And that's the one that you would expect to benefit from this trouble, of course, that Samsung is having with the exploding Galaxy Note 7s that they pulled off the market. But Apple's saying they can't make any more of these than they had planned. And so it's going to be difficult for them to take advantage of extra demand if it's there. They weren't saying on the call if that demand is actually there yet. Uh, they said they expect to come into supply demand balance on the iPhone 7 mm -hmm. by the end of the holiday quarter, but they're not sure about the 7 Plus. So really the benefit for Apple, if there is some from uh, Samsung's stumbles, is likely to come after the holiday quarter. Maybe the cycle will have more legs than it would have afterwards for this phone. The, the average selling prices, Apple said, they expect to come up to last year's level margins expected to be good. So overall, and, and there's expected to be revenue growth again in the holiday quarter versus last year, which of course was their strongest did you, quarter ever. Did you buy what Tim Cook said about China? Because we saw a sharp decline year on year in China, which includes Taiwan and Hong Kong, down 30 percent. And that's a sharp a contrast to what we saw a year ago in the quarter. He said something to the effect of, um, you know, 15, 2015 was a huge upgrade cycle. So everybody was upgrading. So now we're just getting back to normalized rates. At the same time, you have UBS's Steve Milanovic in a note saying that 80 to 90 percent of high end smartphone users in China have a smartphone. Right. So what do you, I mean, no, I don't, do entirely, I don't entirely buy it because what we're seeing overall out of China, and we see this in Qualcomm's results, we also see them in, in uh, Intel's results and some other makers, is that there's a trend toward the mid-range and even the low end in China right now. That's not to say that Apple's doing really poorly at the premium end. It's just saying that the premium end opportunity right now isn't as big as it once was because, again, those folks have phones right now. Maybe the upgrade cycle isn't in full gear right now. So the question the question is, does it come back? Is Samsung in position again to capture some of that? If it does come back, uh, Samsung particularly didn't handle China well with the Galaxy Note 7 and communication around the recall and what to do there. So, I mean, under other circumstances, if Apple had more phones to sell right now in China, they might be in a better position than they are now. But overall, it doesn't look like they're in a bad position. They're very stable. Average selling prices are up. Margins are at the high end of the range. They're projecting growth for the holiday quarter. It's just man, like how many millions of iPhones can you crank out at the right quality level so they don't blow up like Samsung's, that uh, they're firing literally on all cylinders. They could just use some more cylinders. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.